What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying a projector and exactly how to install one, so stay tuned. So a few months ago I did a video on TVs versus projectors, so this video is going to expand on some of the topics that I mentioned in that video, so I do recommend that you go and watch that if you haven't already. Now if you're watching this video then you probably either plan on buying a projector or you just bought one and want some tips on setting it up. So I'll assume that you already know that projectors work better in a dark environment. This means it's generally best to put them in a room that has windows that are covered with curtains and lights that can be either dimmed or turned off. So the first thing you need to do is measure your space to determine throw and screen size. So throw is gonna be the distance that your projector needs to be from the screen to display a certain image. So the bigger the screen size, the farther the projector needs to be away from it. Now, as far as choosing a screen size, it's really up to you, but the biggest factor is the size of your room. So THX recommends that you sit about six feet away from a 55 inch screen and about 14 feet away from a 100 inch screen for optimal viewing. Now I sit about 10 feet away from a 135 inch screen, so I'm definitely not following those guidelines, but I personally just like huge screens. Just keep in mind that the bigger the screen is, the darker the picture is gonna be. So if you're gonna put the projector in a really bright room with a lot of windows or bright lights that can't easily be controlled, you might wanna go with a smaller screen size. Now a really bright projector with a high lumen output will help with this, as well as certain types of screen material, but you should always consider that ambient light is gonna be your projector's worst enemy. So once you're done measuring your space and you figured out which screen size you want, then you need to determine whether or not you need a short throw projector. So for example, the Epson 5040UB needs to be about 12 feet away from the screen in order to project the 120 inch image. So if your room is only 10 feet deep, then this will obviously not work. So you'd either have to make the screen smaller or go with the short throw projector. So projectorcentral.com has a projection calculator that uses the projector's throw ratio to calculate how far a projector needs to be from the screen. So if you already have a projector in mind, you can see if it's in their database and see how far it needs to be from the screen for the size image you want. All right, so your next measurement is gonna be for your HDMI cable. So for this, you'll need to measure across your ceiling and down your wall, leaving a few extra feet of slack just in case you need to move anything. Now, if you plan on buying a 4K projector and you need a cable that's longer than 10 or 15 feet, then I recommend either an active HDMI cable or a fiber HDMI cable. And this is because 4K content, especially 4K HDR, requires a lot of bandwidth. So regular HDMI cables have trouble transmitting the signal over long distances. So active HDMI cables boost and equalize the signal, which allows for you to use a longer cable. And fiber HDMI cables actually use fiber optics, which allows you to transmit a high bandwidth signal over even longer distances. Now, both of these cables do cost a bit more than regular HDMI cables, with fiber cables being the really expensive option, but if you're going with a 4K projector, I would definitely recommend one of them. So the last step of planning is to determine how you're gonna run power to your projector. Now, I personally recommend that you hire an electrician to add a socket in the ceiling and run the HDMI HDMI cable while they're at it, but alternatively, you could just buy a raceway to hide the cables going up and across your wall. So now that you got your room planning out of the way, the next thing to do is to buy a projector if you haven't already. Now, like anything else, the biggest deciding factor when buying a projector is gonna be your budget. Now, it is important to understand that technology is changing really fast nowadays. So just like a TV, your projector might be obsolete in a year or maybe even less. So it's best not to try to spend a bunch of money for the latest and greatest thinking that it's going to last a long time. So this brings me to my next topic, which is 1080p versus 4K. So now that 4K projectors are starting to come down in price, I'll say that I do recommend them over 1080p, but you definitely shouldn't count out a 1080p projector considering there are some really great options out there if you're on a tight budget. Now, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of 4K short throw projectors on the market if you need a short throw projector, but there are some really awesome 1080p short throw projectors like the Optima GT 1080 or the BenQ HT 2150ST. Now, short throw projectors do cost a little bit more than the non-short throw version and they are a bit harder to find but they work really well in places like an apartment or a small room. Now you do need to consider that some budget short throw projectors do suffer from a little bit of lens distortion so the image may not look as good as the non-short throw version but it's usually not enough for most people to notice the difference. Now as far as projector features go most projectors do come with features that are going to help you with installation. So this is going to include things like keystone correction, lens shift, and zoom which are all going to allow you to install the projector in a position that's not optimal. So keystone correction is going to allow you to adjust the geometry of the picture so that you can place the projector off center or slightly higher or lower than the recommended
recommended position. Lens shift is gonna allow you to shift the image without the need to adjust keystone, and the zoom is gonna allow you to make the picture larger or smaller without moving the projector. Now, it is important to keep in mind that some of the more inexpensive projectors might not have all of these options, so you do need to consider that you might have issues during installation if you can't put the projector in the perfect place. Okay, so now on to buying a screen. Now, the very first thing that I always tell people is to wait to buy a screen until you buy a projector first, and there's two reasons for this. And the first reason is because having the projector first allows you to project onto a wall to see what it would look like. And almost every time someone sees their projector for the first time, they change their mind about the size screen they planned on doing. And the other reason is that if you're projecting onto a white wall, it's going to help you decide if you want to go with the white screen or not. So if you're not a big fan of the contrast or black levels of your projector or the ambient light in the room is washing out the image, this is going to help you determine if you should go with a gray screen or a screen that has ambient light rejection. Now, if image quality is your biggest concern, then I would recommend a fixed frame screen. Now, you can get a fixed frame screen with a black border or borderless. Now, borderless screens are awesome, but if you do want to go with a borderless screen, then you definitely want to make sure that your projector is positioned perfectly because otherwise the image is not going to fill the entire screen from edge to edge or some of the image is going to spill off the side of the screen. Now, a pull down screen is going to allow you to do some really cool stuff like have the screen come down in front of an existing TV or if you just want to roll the screen up and use the wall for something else if you want. And another alternative is to paint a wall. So if you have a nice flat and smooth surface, you can just buy some white or gray paint tape off for whatever size screen you want and just paint the wall. Now, if you have any imperfections in the wall, you might have to sand those down, but this does work pretty well. And you can also build your own fixed frame screen if you're handy. There are a lot of YouTube videos out there for that, and you can save yourself a few bucks. So now that you have all your measurements, you're ready to mount your projector. Now, there are a bunch of different types of projector mounts out there, but they all need to be secured to something solid. So if you're mounting your projector on the ceiling and you have a drywall ceiling, then you're going to need to use a stud finder to find where your ceiling joists are. And if you have a drop ceiling, then you need to go above the drop ceiling and secure the mount to something solid like a floor joist. Just keep in mind that you'll likely need to get a mount that has a long extension pole that goes with it and then you can simply cut a hole in the ceiling tile and mount the projector below the drop ceiling. Now as far as determining the height of your projector you'll need to know the vertical offset of the projector. So if a projector has a vertical offset of 100% and the projector is ceiling mounted then the top of the screen is going to start at the center of the projector's lens. And if the vertical offset is higher than 100% then the projector needs to be mounted higher than the screen. Now you can overcome this by either mounting the projector closer to the ceiling, moving moving the screen down closer to the floor or by tilting the projector and adjusting the keystone settings. Now, I don't recommend using keystone correction unless you absolutely have to, as it is going to affect your image quality. Now, if your projector has vertical lens shift, then you may not have to worry about any of this because you can adjust the entire image up or down without degrading the image quality or using keystone. So once you have the image displayed to your liking, you can go ahead and connect your HDMI cable if you haven't already, adjust your picture settings, and you're all set. Now, as far as audio goes, I do recommend that you use a home theater receiver with floor speakers since you want to make the sound stage as wide as your screen. And if you're unfamiliar with the best way to connect your audio devices, then you can take a look at the everything you need to know about home theater audio video that I did a few months ago that has a lot of good information in it, so it might be helpful. Now, we'll be doing a video on building a home theater that'll have even more information like how to connect an audio system to your projector or your TV and more information about HDMI connections with projectors, so stay tuned for that video as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully Hopefully you found it helpful. As always, mash that like button for me if you did. Leave your questions and comments in the comments section. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.